This is a lesson regarding scatter plot or also known as scatter plot diagrams. Scatter plot is one of the ways in which we can display data that was collected. In what cases will we use the scatter plot? We use the scatter plot when we have one set of data but two variables. For example, there are 12 learners in a class, we call them grade 11C, and you want to draw a graph where you show for each learner both a mark for mathematics and for physical science. Now, the purpose that we are going to do this for is because we want to look for a correlation. If there is maybe any way that we can see that the one mark and the other mark is correlating. Okay. Let us look at the data that is given to us. Here are some data of learners and you will see there is a mark that the learner obtained for uh, mathematics and a second mark for uh, physical science. Both these marks are displayed as percentages, in other words a mark out of 100. Here is your data set, it is the 12 learners that we are going to use to display the data for. If we take this data and we want to put it now on a, a diagram, then you will see we have for every learner two sets of data. We have for every learner a math mark and a physical science mark. So if you look at the first one here, John. John had 18% for mathematics and 26% for physical science. So if this dot here is presenting John, then we can read off that John at that point had 18% for mathematics and if we read the corresponding value here, we see that John had 26% for physical science. Now just like so, we can go on to Sarah. Sarah had 36 for mathematics, 36%, and 38% for physical science. So this dot here is um, Sarah. Because if we come down here, we will see that Sarah had 36% for maths, and on this side we can see that she had 38% for physical science. And so each one of these learners in the class can be represented by a dot, where for every one of these dots we can read off a mark for math and we can read off a mark for physical science. You will see here are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 learners in this data set. And these 12 learners are represented then by 12 dots on the scatter plot. 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We are now going to search for a correlation after we have plotted the various points on the graph. If we now try to look and see if we can draw a straight line here somewhere, it's going to be difficult. But if I can put my pen like this, you will see that more or less, since the pen is now thick and because of the, um, the data that is now a little bit spread, we do see a correlation or we see a tendency that, the, that there is what we call a positive uh, correlation. What this means that as the value on the one axis, the x-axis here or the percentage in mathematics increase, the value here on the y-axis or the percentage of physical science also increase. So if we must look for a correlation, we say it appears that learners who do better in mathematics also do better than learners in physical science. In that specific grade 11D class of that specific school. Remember, you cannot generalize this yet because this was not done for all learners taking mathematics and physical science in all schools. But it appears that for that specific school class in that specific school, we can make this deduction. If we do find that these plot points that we have plotted are very close and they are almost on a straight line. The closer they get to a straight line, the more stronger is our positive correlation. In this case, we can see that the marks are a little bit 
further apart from this straight line. So there is a positive correlation, but the correlation is not as strong as it would have been than when all the marks would have been on a straight line. Looking at the marks then again on this uh, graph that I've plotted for you here, you can see that there is the mark of John, the mark of Sarah, and for all the other learners in the class. And if I then look for a correlation, and I can see that in this case, it seems as if as the math mark go bigger, the science mark go bigger, I can deduce at the end of the day that there is a positive correlation and that the learners in this grade 11 D class who do better in mathematics also do better in physical science. Is it then possible that the scatter plot can look different from this one? Yes, it is. If you look at this scatter plot that I'm showing you here, you will s this is a scatter plot where it was investigated for a specific class how the learners uh, did in um, a certain assessment piece. You will see here we talk about the grade point um, average. We want to know how did the learners do in this assessment piece. And we, for the same learner, we look at the hours that this learner spent playing video games before preparing now for this assessment. Now you will see clearly here Learners who played a lot of hours in the video games didn't get such a good grade point average. It's low. Learners who spent less time playing video games got a better mark on the grade point average. So it appears that if we decrease on this side, if we decrease the number of hours spent on playing video games, then it appears that the grade point average of the learners did um, increase. This learner here, for example, who had the highest grade point average, had zero hours spending on playing video games. I'm going to show you again the graph here, and now I'm going to place for you again, because we see no straight line if we try to connect those points, I put for you my pen that is thicker so that we can look for an overall relationship. And this is what we call a negative correlation. Can you see? The line is going down towards the side. As the number of hours is high there, it is low on the grade point average. The number of, of if the grade point average is high, the hours spent playing video games is low. This is called a negative correlation. In this case, the stronger the correlation is not 100%, but there is a correlation because we can form more or less a straight line there. The deduction then that we can make in this case is that there is a negative correlation between the two variables there, and the more the grade point average that the learner obtained, that specific learner obtained, the less the time was spent on video games. Remember? The number of learners that we were looking at in this experiment, we can count them. There was one, two, three, four, and so on learners who participated in this experiment. Is it possible that there can be no correlation? Yes, it is possible that there can be no correlation. In this example I've got here for you, I'm showing for you the percentage that was obtained by learners in a math test. And I'm correlating it with the number of dogs that that person is in fact owing. Here you can see a person owing four dogs getting 20% for the MAFLET test. Here you can see a person owing two dogs getting 90% for the MAFLET test. On that side, here is a person with 10 dogs getting 70% for the MAFLET test. So at the end of the day, here we cannot actually make a deduction and say that the number of dogs that a person is keeping at home is going to influence the marks obtained in mathematical literacy. You can clearly see the data is all over the place. I will not be able to make a positive or a negative correlation deduction. Thank you.